or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, just if I didn't have lipstick on my teeth, what I do know is that this particular beautiful look was created with the Alma palette which was a gift from my very good friend Kay. So, if you want to see just exactly how this palette performs, and whether I like it or not, then my friend you are in precise to the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, you will have seen this in the intro. Now, my lovely friend Kay, who has sent me so many different items of makeup, she's she's pretty much my makeup fairy godmother right now. Um, it all started with the Viseart Libertine palette, which she bought, then decided she didn't like it or couldn't get on with it. And over here, we don't have the option of returning things unless they're faulty. So she messaged me saying, I know it's used, but would you like it? I'm like, oh, goodness, yes, please. Um, she's never let me pay her for anything she sends me, which I truly feel blessed to have friends like her. I, I genuinely do. Not just because you send me things, Kay, because you're a fabulous person as well. But, I, you know, we've had the conversation. But she said to me, this one... She was, it arrived where, with a lot of the shades, um, hadn't survived transit, so when she sent them to me I suggested that she got little roundels of cardboard or something and put them into the, which is what she did and it managed to get to me okay, she sort of like saran wrapped it or cling film, then put the three circles of cardboard on and then more cling film and then closed the lid and sent it to me and it got here in one piece thankfully. Um, I then took all the cling film off, put some, um, swatched it all, and then put some um, rubbing alcohol into the, the loosest ones, popped the cardboard back on, shut it, and I've left it for like a, about a week. So this is how it looks now. And it's just stunning. I'd wanted to try this palette, I just didn't have the money to get it. This is the Alma palette, and it's by Amy Hearts Beauty. And it's a collaboration with Amy Loves Beauty. Lots of A's in this, and I'm an Angie, so there's another A. Um, what I did notice when I was swatching, particularly the mattes, they don't feel like any matte I've ever touched before. They feel... It, it's, a, it's a unique formulation. I've never come across a formulation like this before with mattes. Um, it's difficult to describe. It kind of... If ever you've, you've baked with icing sugar, you know when the icing sugar gets really packed down? You know how that feels? That's kind of how a lot of these mats feel. It, it feels so much thicker in consistency. It, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's really finely milled, but it, it feels like um, oh, it, it's, it's It's one of those consistencies you kind of have to feel to know what it's what it's like. It, it's bizarre. Um, I genuinely have no idea how these are going to actually work on my lid, but I guess we're going to find out shortly. Um, it's a challenge for me. Now, as always, this is a uh, teaching channel and that combined with my chronic pain means I don't go as fast as a lot of YouTubers. There's a speed widget up there. Please feel free to use it. 
my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I'm trying to go, th I'm trying to pan stuff this year, not that I've done an official panning video, but I've hit pan on my butter bronzer, I did that last year. I just hit pan yesterday, which I was super excited about, on this Tarte Exposed Blush. I don't know if you can see that tiny little bit of pan just there, can you see that? which I'm super excited about because I've had this blush for about three years now and it's getting to the stage where it's difficult to actually pick pigment up so I need to get it finished but it's my favourite blush so I thought right okay let's try and pan all the little things because I've got lots of like little primers like this this is a Becca First Light Priming is it First Light Priming Filter? yeah First Light Priming Filter so I've only got a little bit of this left so I've put some of this on today underneath my um, antiperspirant primer that I always use, details of which are in the description box below. Right, let's get you zoomed in. I'm quickly going to talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes, and then it's time to start playing with that palette. Let's get you zoomed in. see both my eyes. Now, uh, on my eyes today, as usual, is my Crow and Pebble Primer. I do have a discount code with them. All my discount codes are listed very clearly in the description box below. Let's try and get my thing standing level. There we go. Um, and they all clearly state whether I earn from them or not. With this one, I don't. I earn Pebbles which I can offset against future purchases from the store. Right, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, deep set eyes. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, space that tugs back away out of sight. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, and you can see again, there's lid space that folds back in. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So I get transference of colour to the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get bare patch. And it's because we have the same symptoms that so many people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids. Then they follow the instructions for a hooded lid tutorial and wonder why their makeup doesn't look right. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your upper lid where you want your new crease to be. Obviously, this is going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so use smaller blending brushes, and if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow. You can still add a brow bone highlight at the top afterwards, if necessary. If, however, you've got deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do when we're putting a colour through the crease, which usually will be the deepest of the shades, we just need to make sure that we've brought it up high enough that it's visible when our brows are relaxed and our eyes are open. So, two different workarounds for two very different eye types, which have very similar issues. Okay, I'm going in with a synthetic brush. I'm going to use the Jeffrey Morphe JS8 to start with, which is a nice, big, loose, fluffy brush. So excited to try this, but also a little bit nervous because, you know, different formula, one I've not used before. So I'm going to start off by going into a Dream Weaver, I think. Wow, yeah, the minute you touch this with a brush, can you see the kick up in pan? 
Um, it doesn't worry me. I'm going to tap off a bit of the brush though. Um, all I'll do is I'll just pick up that loose when I go back in again next time. You can see it's picked up well onto the brush. I hold the brush right at the end and I'm going to start off with little circular movements. Just up here. And obviously reversing the direction as I come back out again. Now I did tap a lot of the pigment off, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more. So this is going to be tricky to work with because you can see I've got heck of fall out there already. Just as well I do my base afterwards, isn't it? And that was with me tapping off as well. Okay. on nicely. Even over this bit here, because I struggle here and here, where I get like a very very dry, almost eczema style skin. And I can sometimes struggle to get pigments to blend over it. But that's actually blended quite nicely. Alright, so gently pick up some of the kick up and then tap it back off again. Hmm. You barely need to touch this pan to get pigment up. Which in one respect is good, but in another respect does mean that you're probably going to end up wasting quite a bit of it because you're going to end up with kick up in the pan that you're just going to have to dust away or blow away afterwards. The reason that I do circular movements like this is that I'm 45 years old, I've lost just under 14, well, just 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, but I know 20 year olds that have always been, you know, perfect BMI that have got looser eyelids. You can see I'm struggling here to get the pigment to attach because I've got obviously a dry patch there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... I've blended the edges out. I'm just going to tap now to try and build the pigment up over that area. Yeah, okay. That seems to have gone on okay. Um, by doing circular movements like that you're very very gently moving the skin of the eyelid around so uh, you don't end up with tiger striping the only place that doesn't work for me is down here where I have super deep creasing where this eye was pulled around a lot at the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old I really like this colour this is the kind of colour that I just do a one and done with right just cleaning my brush off on a clean washcloth. I've stopped using colour switches, I find they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you have um, natural hair brushes. Obviously these are synthetic as I said. Right, I'm going to go into Spirit next, and I am barely going to touch this pan. <laughs> this is a slightly bluer, I mean you you all know me and my purples, I love it. Purple and green and I'm a happy girly. So I'm just going to pop this one a little further down. Same motions and I'm holding the brush right at the end to avoid putting too much pressure on the lid. And just blending this out. Now obviously I've picked up a lot less pigment this time because I don't want to have a huge amount of pigment that I have to blow away afterwards so it's taking a little longer to build the colour up but that's not an issue it is building but even being careful there is fallout you really are going to have to do your 
base afterwards if you're using this palette. It's very, very... I don't mind a dusty palette so long as it doesn't fall out down my face and this one does. But it does dust away easily enough so that's good. And these colours are blending together very nicely indeed as you can see. Kind of a lavender and then a bluebell shade. I always get more fallout this side because this eyelid is looser where it was pulled around so much. But you can see this is still it's blending nicely. I don't normally dust out off fallout as I go but because this fallout is just so, so bloody obvious, it will annoy the hell out of me at editing if I don't. So I apologise if it's bugging you that I keep stopping and uh, dusting the fallout away. But it's just to stop me from going mad in the editing process. Again, just... I seem to have blended away that patch again. Don't worry, I'll top that back up again in a minute. Once I've finished blending these two shades together, so how's your day been? Have you got this palette? What do you think of it? Do you have the same dusty issues as I am having, or? I'm just going to clean the brush off and pick up some more of that original colour just to just to re, re, re sort of re sort of blend more re blend it more there we go just tap it into place like so These really are very soft shades, very soft indeed, I um, don't think I've ever worked with a formula like this before, hence my hence my not speaking very much, I'm kind of to a slightly less fluffy brush. This is the JS12. I'm just going to go back into that spirit. Just, just want to build up this outer corner without dislodging that bit there. So let's just build that bit back up. This is absolutely not a beginner's palette at all. Um, I mean, I'm not a bloody expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I've been doing makeup for a long time now, and I'm really having to be careful how I do this. Right. I'm going to go into Taurus. Ah, that's my star sign. This is lovely deep sort of indigo purpley blue. And I'm just going to put this on the outer corner coming through roughly to the middle. Tiny, 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 tiny little circles. That's nice. And then just bring it down onto the 
out a third of the Mite Bar lid. Okay, darker colour doesn't want to dust away quite as easily. But it has gone. Ish. This is quite a challenging palette. But it is also a very pretty palette. I'm super, super grateful to Kay for sending it to me. She also sent me a couple of the um, Jouer Minis, the berries and the violets. So let me know which of those two you want to see first in the comments box. Just let me know whether you want to see berries or violets first. I'm just blending. I'm struggling a bit here. I must have a particularly dry side today. Perhaps I didn't moisturise as well this morning as I thought I did. So I'm struggling this side to get pigment to actually adhere. And the fact that it adhered this side shows me it's not the pigment that's the issue, it's actually my eye. What I might have to do is go over the edge and just tidy it up with some micellar water in a minute. Okay, this is a little bit of fun and games today, isn't it, folks? Sorry I'm being very quiet. I'm really having to concentrate on this one. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely palette and I love the colour story. But, oh my, is it a bugger to work with. So. Pad with some of my cellar water on. Just... Tidy up the edge there and do the same on this side. There you go. I don't like using tape because if it's stuck on firmly enough, that pigment is not going to go down underneath it, then it's stuck on firmly enough that it's going to pull your skin when you take it off. my feelings about that. Right, as always never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but I now have to decide which of these gorgeous pigments I want to go into. I think I'm going to go into Wish initially. I'm using a JS24 which is the, um, the lip brush that he did with Morphe because it's it's a really good shape for getting down into the corner there so a pack pigment on both sides I'm just going to spray it I'm using a bit of I'm using the uh, the last of my jasmine of the sleigh all day um, I just find for some reason that the jasmine one just seems to dry my jawline out so I don't tend to use that on my face now but it's great for I mean, you can use anything. You can use priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray, moisturising spray like Mac Fix Plus. You can even use clean water. But let's see how opaque this is. It's the first time I use a palette. I don't tend to do a cut crease because I like to see just how opaque the shimmers are because obviously some of them are designed as toppers, some of them can be full opacity like this one. This is beautiful. Now I'm just drying the um, brush off before I go back into that pigment again. Now with my left eye I do have to pull the lid out because otherwise what happens is the pigment 
collects in the deep creases but it collects loosely rather than being blended on and it ends up cascading down my face through the day which is horrible um, but you will notice that I only pull it out as far as I have to I don't lob it out to my ear hole um, and I let go as soon as I can Okay. You can see some of the tiger striping effect there already. This is a really pretty shimmer. It's almost like a, a cornflower blue. And it has the opacity to go over deeper matte which is good to see Again, try and clean the brush off because I'm going for a different colour now. There is a colour in here that has been calling to me. And it is Roman. And it is just stunning. Look at this beautiful, beautiful teal. some on this on this one yes that was a little bit of fallout this is a very crumbly shade be careful even when wet it's very crumbly right so I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to blend where it meets the mat there and then lightly drag the lighter shade just across the top to blend where the two colours meet that's so pretty Right, I have dried the brush off and I'm going to go back in. I can see this being a favourite shade of mine. It's actually pretty much the exact shade of my bridesmaids dresses. wonder why it's a favourite shade of mine. What do you reckon folks? Huh? And again, good opacity. So I'm just using the tip of the bristles there, just to blend it into the matte, and then lightly drag the lighter colour across onto it. So you get a nice transition between the two. That is super pretty. Really is pretty. Right, uh, I'm going to pause you and uh, I will put some foundation and other base products on and then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Wow, this is a bugger to get out of the brush. It probably means it's going to stain your eyes. Right. I am going to have to wait until the next time I press record before I can speak to you again, but for you, my darlings, it will be seamless and instant. 
hello, I am back and I decided clearly that purple brows were the order of the day and it's come over so cloudy while I was doing that that is probably going to look a completely different colour now right, grabbing my flat top brush from earlier and I am going to go into Taurus and just buff that very bloody carefully along the lower lash line because obviously I say very carefully and then get it every sodding way. Well done! So obviously I don't really want fallout now because I've done my base. You know I'm all about that base, about that base, no fallout. Sorry Megan. Regular viewers will know that I very often start singing. I think it's the Welsh in me. Right. Regular viewers will also recognise this brush. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped and it's chunky and it's great for blending out. So, I am going to go into Blessed, which I've not used yet. Which is a proper cool flower blue. I might tap that off a little bit actually. And then I'm just going to buff very gently along that lower lash line to give me a nice smoky effect because the problem that I get um, I've always had sensitive eyes and the fibro makes it worse they get very streamy so I, I usually can't put anything in my waterline at all that's why I tend to go for the smoky under eye instead to give me some drama. And this is a tiny lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago. And I am going to go into Cloud 9, which was the sadly most broken of the shades. I'm actually keeping those little circles of cardboard to keep in them. that as my inner corner. Wow, look at that. That's pretty. Look at that. And you know I like to bring mine along underneath and just blend it in to the colours underneath my eye. I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely. don't have to do that if you don't want to, clearly. I'm just going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow to give a little bit of a va 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 voom. Like so. I really, really like that. Okay, I am going to pause you for one last time. I will do mascara, I will do lipstick, I will do something with my hair. I'll be back with a finished look. I am back. Okay, I used my Fenty Waterbrat pink highlighter for my cheeks. Uh, the Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. She's checking I had none on my teeth. This is another one of those little mini Fenties from the little set that I got. With the ridiculously small print on the bottom. No chill. But like, seriously, come on now. You, you couldn't have, you know, put it down, down the side, maybe? Where we could actually read it easier if we are over a certain age. Anyway, 
this is my finished look with the Alma palette. Um, I really like it. It does take some getting used to though. Um, this is absolutely not a beginner's palette. Um, I mean I've got a really nice look out of it. But I really had to concentrate on what I was doing. I, you will have noticed I barely chanted at you today. Which you might have actually enjoyed. Um, that being said, I do love the finished look. And I am going to continue to play with this. Um, and you'll probably see more looks with this on my channel over the next few months. Okay, darling, thank you so much for sending me this. I had so much fun playing with it. Um, and I will continue to have fun playing with it. Um, I just wanted my first impressions to be on camera. I really should have played with it beforehand, I guess. But I, I wanted you to see my initial reaction to it. Um, so that if you do pick this up, this is limited edition, I believe. Most collabs usually are. Um, if you do pick this up, just bear in mind that you are probably going to have to... It, it's not going to be the kind of palette you pick up in the morning when you're running late. Uh, that I will say. Um, you need to have some time if you're going to be using this particular palette. That being said, do I like it? Yes. Will I continue to use it? Absolutely. Um, I really hope that you have found this helpful. If you're one of my regular viewers, please double check you are still subscribed. People are still being unsubscribed. I got unsubscribed from Shane Glossin and I had the notification bell run and I am I've I've moaned about this in about four videos now because it really bugs me. <sighs> anyway. Once you've done that, don't forget to hit the like button, leave me a comment. Um, have you got that palette? Do you find the same issues with me? Do you find hecking fallout? Um, but super, super pigmented. I mean, so I, I'm getting distracted because I can see a little bit of glitter right in the front of my brow just there from a look that I did yesterday because we all know glitter is like the herpes of makeup. It sticks around forever. Um, yes. So, if this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm usually a lot more chatty than I was today. I've got a lot of other films you can check out to see what I'm normally like when I'm not having to super, super concentrate on a completely new formulation of palette. So, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. That is super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button, you turn it from red to grey, you ring the bell, you select all notifications, you jump through a hoop, you, you, you sign a covenant in your own... I don't know, spit. And hopefully YouTube will actually let you know when I upload a new video. Gone are the days you could just like a channel and see their content on your newsfeed. Anyway, that's quite enough from me for one day. So all that remains for me to say as ever, my darlings, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.